Hi, I'm Dennis Zimmerman, a community fishing enthusiast. Welcome to the Family Fishing Connection. Today is about getting outside and making a connection with nature, with the environment, with our kids, and hopefully with a fish. We're heading out today ice fishing to a local stock lake in Whitehorse, Yukon, where we'll be trying to catch rainbow trout, maybe some grayling and Arctic char. All right, we begin our ice fishing adventure by getting all our gear together. It's really important to get all your stuff together and be prepared before you head out because preparation is the key when you're ice fishing. Number one, first thing I like to do is you can't forget the kids. So with that, I should bring down my fishing buddies, Zach and Max. Let's go guys, come on. All right, get ready. Let's go. Get your gear on. All right, now that the kids are dressed, and they're dressed really well, they've got layers on, they can take things off or put things on, got all the right gear on to, get, to stay warm out on the ice. But I also bring along a bag with a whole bunch of other things. And within that, I have food, all kinds of snacks and drinks. It's easy to get dehydrated out there and the kids want to keep eating food to keep their energy up. I've also got in here extra clothes like gloves or uh, extra hats. Um, there's also toilet paper, there's the first aid kit, and I like to bring along little hand warmers and foot warmers. Those little packets that warm up when you put them down their, their boots, just to kind of take the edge off. I've got the kids all dressed, I've got all my gear here, now we've got to get all the ice fishing gear together. Alright, let's go. Next, we've got to get our ice fishing tackle together. So what I've got here is I've got, of course, an auger, a power auger. I've got my tackle box. I've got a sled to pull things out on the lake. I've got a shovel. I've got my rods, chairs, and a few other little things to keep the kids busy while we're out there. Here we are at Pump House Lake, and what will make this very successful is to understand expectations. I have to manage my expectations, and I have to manage the kids' expectations. It's not about a marathon session where I catch as many fish as I can, it's about getting the kids out and having a positive experience. And that, they may not want to sit out here when it's cold, but we're just going to give it our best shot and see if we can catch a fish. It's here, Zach, hold on. One of the things we really got to be careful of is our safety. And when you're on ice, you really have to know how thick that ice is and where you're going. When you're dealing with water, there's always moving water, there's always softer spots, there's always some areas that might be a little bit sketchy. So I know in this lake that we're going to have at least two feet of ice, and I know exactly which spot I'm going to go to. And it's really important or you can spend a lot of time drilling holes and not be in the right area. What you want to look for is the same kinds of things you're looking for in the summer. You want to find drop-offs, structure, sandy shoals, whatever it is in the summer that has fish, they'll be there in the winter as well. If you don't know what you're looking for, you can look at topographic maps, you can ask other anglers, or find the holes that are already out there. The most important thing is to know where you're going before you step out onto that ice. All right, let's go guys. We're at the spot where we want to start putting in some holes. Before we do that, we've got to set up our base camp. 
There's a lot of snow here today, so it's really easy to lose a whole bunch of different things. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna lay out a blanket and we're gonna put everything on that blanket so that we can see it or it's gonna go back in the sled. Otherwise, it's gonna get buried and it's gonna end up at the bottom of the lake in the summer. So let's get our blanket set up. All right, Zach. There you go. You and Max do that. Okay, good. All right, should we do a hole? I've got four areas when I, where I want to put some holes. I've already started by removing most of the snow. You want to get down right to the ice because it's going to make your hole and cleaning it out a lot easier. So I'm just going to get started by drilling this hole. All right, we've now drilled the hole all the way through to the water. You gotta be careful when you go down because once it penetrates through to the water, the auger's gonna wanna pull down. So just be careful of that. Also try to stand back as you're augering as best you can because uh, you know the auger can get caught on clothes and, and cause some damage. So we're gonna take out all this surface slush and, uh, and then we're gonna scoop out that hole. So we got the area nice and clear. Now Max, you wanna get in there and just scoop that out? So Max is going to take all this slush out because we obviously want to get down to the, uh, just to the water because a clear hole makes it so that your line doesn't get interrupted as it's going down to the fish. It's really important to try not to get wet. So Max, do you want to back up a little bit or stand up so your knees don't get all wet? Because there's a lot of water here right now. And because there's so much water when you're ice fishing, um, you want to make sure they have good rubber boots because regular winter boots with a little bit of fabric can get kind of wet. So. Good insulated rubber boots are kind of the best way to go. So Max is getting this hole uh, a little bit clear here. We want to make sure all of that slush is gone. And when it's very cold, that hole can freeze up again. So it's really important to get rid of that. And these don't float as well. So another thing to remind kids, which I didn't do, is to put this around their wrist. Because if they drop it, it's going to go down. So it's always a good idea to do that. So we'll just get that little bit of, you guys did a great job. We're just going to get that little bit of surface slush off and now our hole is pretty much ready you want to have a look down there just to make sure that you're not into mud or sometimes it can be a little bit deceiving but i do know there is a fair bit of water here so the next step is to get a line down there What you want to use for an ice fishing rod is something that's a little bit smaller. They sell a lot of smaller ice fishing rods and, and they're, not, they're not too expensive. So it's always good to pick up a short one because you want to be really close to your hole. If you have a very long rod, you're going to be farther away from the hole and you won't feel that fish. The reels are a little bit smaller with the smaller rods as well, but it's the same rule as in summer uh, fishing on lakes and open water which is where you want to make sure that your rod matches your line which matches your reel. With your fishing line, you want to make sure that it's matched to your reel and you also want to make sure that it's not too heavy that you won't feel a fish hit and it's not too light that when that fish hits it'll break off. We really do need to know what's underneath the ice. If it's something like rainbow trout, we know it's a light fish so I might want to use something like a four pound test or a six pound test maximum uh, just to give it enough that we can feel it. Because it's rainbow trout mainly, we want to use a small hook. Um, you want to use a small hook so they can just sort of suck it up and gobble it in. I'm using a small treble hook, a size 18, with a little power bait on it. And that power bait gives it a little bit of scent. Because we want the fish to be able to smell something and really sink their teeth into something down there. A bare hook on its own probably isn't going to do it. You can use a small spoon too or something that attracts them over. They've been underwater and under ice for for the whole winter and they're not feeding aggressively. You just got to give them a little bit of extra scent to take that hook. 
When you put your lure down the hole, it's really key to get that lure at the right depth. So the way I like to do it is I like to drop the lure all the way down. I stick some weight on it, usually about maybe eight to 10 inches above, above the lure. I drop it all the way to the bottom. Then you bring it up about six inches and that's usually where I start. Leave that line in the water, let it sit for a while. You might get a hit right away, so you don't want to jig it too much. But then, once it's been there for a little while, just give it a little jig like this. You can either do that with your hand, right on the line, or you can do that with your rod, just like this. And you may feel that fish, just tap it, or just a full take. But you really gotta be ready for any tension on that line to be able to set that hook. And uh, it's time to get the kids fishing. So Zach, you wanna give it a go? What we've got here is called a tip-up. And what this lets you do is it lets you put, the, put a lure down into the water, get it down into the fish, and then you can walk away. And basically this flag will tell you when there's a fish. The fish will hit this line, it'll pull that, and it'll pop this flag up. When that flag pops up, you wanna run because you probably have a fish on. With your fishing license, you're usually allowed to set up uh, two holes per person. So while you're in one hole fishing with your rod, you can set up a tip up in the, other in the other one and it increases your chances by double. So I always like to get a couple of these going. It also adds an element of excitement and intrigue when you're fishing with the family. Because when that flag goes, everybody runs. What we're using for bait here today is little cocktail shrimp, the kind you buy at the store. Um, rainbow trout tend to like them. They've got a little bit of odor and it's kind of enticing enough for them to hit. So we just took some cocktail shrimp, we cut it up into little pieces and we attach it on the end of a very small hook. It's very light, so we're gonna need a little bit of weight to take it down. We wanna get the line down as close to the bottom as possible, bring it up about six inches from the bottom. So I just let it go down until it stops. So it's already stopped there, so I'm gonna bring it up. About to there. I'm gonna put this in the hole like that. I'm just gonna test it, make sure it's gonna turn the right way. So when that, like that. Okay. All right, I've got that tip up set up and I've got it in a way that I can see it from the other holes. So I got a bit of a trough here so I can see down that line and when that flag pops up, even over the snow, I'll be able to know that we've got a, maybe a fish on. Ice fishing is a real patience game, and inevitably the kids are going to want to put the reel down and do other things. The nice thing is you can still set up your rod, have it in the water, and still have a chance to catch a fish. So it's always a good idea to kind of plant it in something. I'm using the cover of my ice auger, or you can plant it right in the snow beside you. And they even have these little bells you can buy. Attach the bell, the end of your rod like that, and if a fish bites, it jingles and you come and pick it up. Because remember, getting outside with your kids and ice fishing, it's not really about catching the fish. It's about them doing all other kinds of things outside. You want to encourage them to roll snowballs, you want to sled on hills, to do all kinds of things. At the end of the day, it's about getting them outside and having fun. We've had a great day here today. We've put in a bunch of different holes. Kids have been doing a lot of different things, climbing trees and sledding and pushing big snowballs. We've tried different presentations at different depths and we have accomplished our goal. We've connected with nature, we've connected with each other, but we haven't connected with the fish. But I'm not giving up yet. And with that, I'm Dennis Zimmerman and thanks for watching the Family Fishing Connection.